This video demonstrates how to use the SIGFIG calculator under the SciTools app for the TI-8384 calculators. We shall demonstrate its use with several examples. Our first example is to report the sum of 24.07 and 32.3 using the correct number of significant figures. So we'll hit the Apps button and we will scroll until we find the SciTools app. And we'll select that one and we'll hit enter and we will go ahead and choose the SIGFIG calculator. So when you type in your numbers this is the screen that you should see. So you see, see SIGFIG calculator and you see these options down here. We'll talk about these momentarily. First let's go ahead and add 24.07 and 32.3. When we go to add our two numbers together, the app will align the values vertically according to place value. This allows us to count the number of significant digits in each term. The numbers in brackets on the right of the screen are the number of significant digits for that number. Notice that when the sum is performed, it will add normally first, then round the result to the appropriate number of significant digits. So if we look at the screen, we have 24.07, that has four significant digits. We have 32.3, this gives us three significant digits. It adds normally first, and then it rounds the result to the appropriate number of significant digits. In this case, it is three. Let's look at another example. Let's say we wanted to divide 45.00 by 4.7. We'll go ahead and type these in, 45.00, and we'll divide that by 4.7. And again, the same thing occurs. If we look at the uh, screen, we have 45.00 that has four significant digits. These zeros are not counted as placeholders, so they are counted as significant, divided by 4.7, which has two significant digits. It did the arithmetic normally first, and then rounded to the appropriate number of significant digits, in this case, two. Let's look at another example. Determine the product of 45 and 40 with a decimal point in the number 40, and then round. We type in 45, that has two significant digits. We type in 40 with a decimal point, that also has two significant digits. The product is 1800, and it rounded to the appropriate number of significant digits, in this case 2, which is also 1800. These zeros are counted as placeholders, so we have 1 and 8 as significant. The next example repeats these uh, numbers in the product operation, but this time without the decimal point. So we'll, we'll see a difference in the result in this case. So we'll type in 45 as normal, and this time we'll type in 40 but without the decimal point. And notice here we only have one significant digit in our result. So if we look at the large screen, 45 still has 2, but 40 this time without the decimal point only has one. This zero would be counted as a placeholder uh, in terms of the app. When you do the product you get 1800 again, but to round to the appropriate number of significant digits, we round it up to 2000. These zeros are placeholders, the two is considered significant, and there's only one significant digit in the result. The next example asks us to compute a power. So we're going to take 0 .06 and square it, and we'll use the appropriate number of significant digits to report our answer. So we'll type in uh, 0 .06, the caret button, and then the number 2. We'll go ahead and type all that in and hit enter. Uh, this application uh, converts to scientific notation immediately to count the number of significant digits. Counting numbers are considered exact, so the number of significant digits is, re is represented by an X in square brackets in this app. 
Since there was only one significant digit in the base, there will only be one significant digit in the result. So if we look at the large screen, we have 6 <coughs> uh, times 10 to the negative 2 power, that has one significant digit, raised to the second power, that has, uh, that's exact, so that has x number of significant digits. Does the uh, arithmetic uh, exactly and then rounds appropriately to the uh, correct number of significant digits, in this case, 1. So let's say that we want to take 0.16 and raise it to the 1.5 power. And again, use the appropriate number of significant digits to report your answer. So we'll go ahead and type in 0.16 and we will raise that to the 1.5 power and then hit enter. The same process has been applied. It will perform the arithmetic normally first and then round to the appropriate number of significant digits located in the base. So here we have 1.6 times 10 to the negative 1 power that has two significant digits in it raised to the 1.5 power. This is considered exact. You get 6.4 times 10 to the negative 2 and that rounds to 6.4 times 10 to the negative 2 with the appropriate number of significant digits, 2. This next example will ask us to divide 1 by 7 and then report the uh, appropriate number of significant digits. <clears throat> so if you type in 1 divide by 7 and hit enter your result will be 1 times 10 to the negative 1. If we look at the large screen, let's see what's happening. When we typed in 1 divided by 7, it interpreted the results should only, should, as being only having one significant digit in its result. And that's because we didn't tell this application that 1 and 7 were exact. So it went through and did the arithmetic normally and then rounded to the appropriate number of significant digits. If you are dealing with exact numbers, like 1 divided by 7, for example, we need to tell this application that these numbers are exact. So let's repeat this problem and this time tell the application that we are dealing with exact numbers. And in order to do that, we hit the Y equals key to tell it that it's exact. So we repeat the calculation with this new uh, information and it comes up with our result. So if you have exact numbers, you'll need to use the Y equals button to let the numbers uh, be exact as registered in the app. So if we look at the large screen, here we have 1, but it has an X over here for the number of significant digits. And that means that this is considered an exact number. And the same thing for the 7. It goes through the arithmetic normally and maintains all the digits that it can possibly display. Now, unfortunately, the app cannot do all the functions programmed on the calculator. For example, it will not handle logarithms or trigonometric functions. Powers have to be typed in, so the squaring button, the square root, the cubing button, and the cube root buttons are also not available for use here. You'll have to type them in as done previously. What if we have a number in scientific notation already and we wish to work with that? Well, here's an example as to how this uh, application can be used. Suppose we wish to subtract 5.6 times 10 to the 7th power from 3.81 times 10 to the 6th power and using the appropriate number of significant digits to report your answer. So we'll type in 3.81 times 10 to the 6th minus 5.6 times 10 to the 7th. And then we'll hit enter. Using the window button activates the double E command. So if you have numbers that are already written powers of 10, you can use this button to type them in. The app automatically converts these to standard notation, computes and rounds accordingly. And the reason why that is is because I have DEC highlighted here. If I have DEC highlighted, it means to represent the numbers in a decimal format first. So went on ahead and did the arithmetic as we look on the large screen, converted to decimal format, gave us the appropriate number of significant digits, did the arithmetic normally, and then rounded accordingly.
The Psi option will enable you to view the numbers in scientific notation rather than standard notation. So if you wanted to view this in scientific notation, you can hit the trace button, which will activate the scientific notation. So let's clear this out and let's look at example 9. Let's add 52.3 and 21.0. So we'll go ahead and type those numbers in and hit enter. And just like as before, it went through and uh, did the arithmetic and then computed the number of significant digits. The edit option, which can be activated by hitting the graph button, uh, simply allows you to edit an expression that is already on the screen. So suppose the previous example should have had us add 52.4 with 22.0 instead. So we'll go ahead and hit the graph button for edit and we will uh, scroll until we are highlighting the appropriate uh, place value to change our numbers and again we will continue to scroll until we are highlighting these values. Go ahead and change that and again we have our result. So if you do uh, mistype a number in the app you can simply hit the graph button to edit it and then use the arrow buttons to maneuver the cursor uh, to the appropriate place value for you to uh, fix the mistakes. And this is how you can use the SigFig calculator under the Psi Tools app on the TI-8384 calculators.